as a modern day version of slavery. Human trafficking is a global human rights crisis. Fighting for freedom for those who can't is Tier Fund's youth ambassador, the inspirational and talented. This is actually Olivia singing right now. No. Olivia Luxon. Oh, wow. How Good clever are you? <laughs> Very talented. Hey, welcome. Um, tell us a little bit about you when you're not an ambassador. What do you love doing? Well, I love doing a very wide range of things, definitely. Um, definitely my music and acting and then photography. And then on the other side, I also love doing my sports. So lacrosse, netball, tennis, and then hanging out with my friends. All rounder. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you're covering it all. <laughs> okay, let's talk about being an ambassador. Mm -hmm. How do you get that opportunity? Well, for me, I was really lucky because in 2015, when I was in year nine, um, I got the privilege to travel to Manila in the Philippines. and. While we were there, we were in the slums of Manila, but we also spent some time at a place called Center of Hope, which is a rehabilitation center for trafficked boys and girls that had been rescued. And I got to meet the people there and hear their stories. And coming home, that really impacted me, and so I decided to write a slam poem on that. And from there, I got linked in with Tear Fund, and in 2016, I started working with them. And then the ambassadorship got officiated earlier this year. So you were in Manila with uh, not as a not not as a Tear Fund ambassador or anything. No, just not at that on a trip. Point. Yes, engaging with what was going on. Yes. And so, what does your role actually involve? So, basically, I do a lot of speaking at uh, fundraising events for Tear Fund, trying to educate people and also spread awareness about this topic, and then. A really important part of the youth um, section of Ambassador is that being 16, I represent a vast um, amount of um, youth that are have been trafficked and kind of being their voice for them that can't speak. Mm. So you went on a huge trip called the Journey to Freedom. Tell us more about that, where you went and what was happening. So. Basically, we went earlier this year in April and we went to Thailand and Nepal. Um, and whilst we were there, we got to work with and uh, visit Tier Funds, some of Tier Funds' partner organizations over there. So, Sharon Care Nepal and Lyft International, and really see what they're doing on the ground against this fight. So, first off, we went to Nepal, and whilst we were there, we were with Sharon Care Nepal. And a big part of that was we went into the rural communities and really got to see the impact that Sharon Kara had had on these people's lives. Right. So a big part of that as well was that we got to meet these women and youth action groups and they basically, with the help of Sharon Kara, had been able to create incomes and businesses for their families as well as being educated about trafficking and therefore educated other communities mm. um, about it. And lastly, seeing that like strength and empowerment that they were able to create. Did you did you meet anyone that had, had direct involvement with trafficking and did you hear their stories? We did, in um, various different towns. We were able to meet some of the few that had been rescued because only 1% get rescued. Was there so. any story that really stood out to you? I think, one of the biggest ones was in a rice field town in Nepal and uh, she was saying how this particular story didn't happen to her although she was trafficked but a, a woman across from another village who had been trafficked uh, was beaten so badly and would scream every time she would get raped or the men would come into the room and so they ended up cutting her tongue off. Oh. Oh. So it's horrific. It is. It really is. Is it a visible thing? Like when you go to these places, do you see that, you know, I guess there is trafficking happening? Because I guess it's so underground mm -hmm. that it's hard to find and hard to stop. Yeah, well, that's a really interesting thing because um, in Thailand, the second part of our trip, when we were with Lyft International, they work in the prosecution and uh, protection in the trafficking sectors. And a big part of that trip was actually we went on a simulation investigation and we went into the red light districts and walking past and you knew that there were girls in there that had been trafficked. Wow. So mm. in a way, it's hidden and not necessarily yeah. talked about yeah. a lot, but it is in plain sight. I mean, these red light districts mm. oh, have yeah. hundreds and thousands of neon lights and there are hundreds of people walking through them. but. I don't think that a lot of them actually know what's going on behind. A bit the of doors. an eye opener for a 16-year-old from New Zealand. <laughs> I mean, I can obviously see what, why have you got? Why are you so passionate about this? I think for me, having met victims of trafficking, mm. heard their stories, seen the communities that they've come from and their families, 
um, where they end up, and then knowing the abuse, violation, and injustice that goes on, for me, I couldn't not do anything. I had to do something about it when I came home. I just knew I had to join the fight. Wow. And you are incredible because you're bringing awareness to it. But what can we do? What can Mel and I do? People watching the cafe do? What can we do to help? So really, it's a threefold because firstly, um, people can research about the subject so they can go on and educate other people and spread, spread awareness because the more people that know, mm. the more people that can join the fight. Um, secondly, very simply, stop the demand. For Western cultures like us, we feed the demand so heavily mm. and if there is no demand, there wouldn't be any trafficking. And then thirdly, and something that people can even do right now, is to support really good organisations like Tia Fund that have partners and people on the ground that are actually working in these sectors and making a change. So, so what would you like to be doing in the future? Well, I definitely know I have a heart for social justice, so I know that will be a big part of whatever I do in the future. Otherwise, I'm just kind of figuring it out a little bit. Um, I'm looking at doing a Bachelor of Communications and otherwise I'll just keep making music and doing what I love. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Based on the introduction, you can do anything. <laughs> what an inspiration. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. Mm. If you want more information on Tear Fund and their mission, you can head to the website, which is on screen right now.